the Lord. Yes, Praise sir. the Lord. Thank the young brother for yeah. that beautiful word. Yeah. Speaking the truth of God. And I was speaker for the day would be Ella Thompson. Let's get in there. Praise it. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Congregation, fellow Johnson congregation. Praise the Lord. 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 Amen. We're thankful. Amen. Thank God. Let the young man know where we are. And we'll sing a little song. Amen. And Jesus, we live in, we know where we are in Jesus. You are listening to the services coming from the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ of the Apostolic Faith. Yeah. We're located at 612 Jefferson Avenue, yeah. Pottstown, PA 19464. Our phone number is 610-326-2460. Yeah. You can also visit our website on www.heeverliveth.org www.heeverliveth.org We now present the speaker, Elder Johnson. Hear ye him. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise this Lord. little song that says, All the way to Calvary, he went for me. Amen. I'd like to sing it a couple of times. All the way to Calvary, he went for me. He went for me, he went for me, all the way to Calvary, he went for me, and now he set me free, although I had so many, many sins, Jesus washed them all away, and he pardoned me. Although I have so many, many sins, Jesus washed them all away, and he pardoned me. All the way to Calvary, for me, yes. Too many, but we get enough. 
there are people that are interested in uh, hearing what we have to say. Amen. There are some who are interested in shutting us up. There are some who are interested in shutting us down. Amen. But the scripture said, be preach the word. It said, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exalt with all long suffering. It tells you what to do in these last days. It said, be, do the work of an evangelist. Amen. Do the work of an evangelist. Preach the gospel. Amen. And that's what we're doing today. Amen. And you know, there's another song that said, I feel good, good. Good. I feel good, wonderful good every time I talk about Jesus. I feel good. Amen. We're at war, but we're not at war with ourselves. We're at war with the enemy. Amen. The scripture said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. In high places, sometimes you look at your brother or you look at your sister and you tell yourself that's the enemy. That's not the enemy. It's what's inside them. It's who's inside them. There's a reason why the scripture said try the spirit. Amen. Try what's in them. All men are made up of three things. Body, spirit and soul. Amen. We know what the body is. We can see it. But the body in and of itself has no value, you know. Can't do a thing by itself. That's why when a man dies, the body's lying on the ground, he can't move anymore. Amen. Why? The spirit left it, the soul left it. Amen. What is the soul? The soul is life. When God in Genesis suddenly breathed in Adam, and Adam became a living soul. Until then, he was just a dead soul. He was nothing. Had a body, but had no life. God breathed in Adam's nostrils and Adam came alive. Why? God put his life in him. And that life was the soul. That's why God said, all souls are mine. Every being that has ever walked the earth, that ever stood up, that was ever born, walked around on two legs, crawled around on all four. Man said, if a baby is born and dies, will it go to heaven? What does the scripture say? All men are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Amen. If you don't reach the age where you can get right with God, you've got a problem. Amen. Every man is born in sin. Every man is shaped in iniquity. Amen. Some would argue, well, that small baby, God couldn't send that to hell. You're living in the age when everything that's born is born in sin. Look in the scriptures. Look around you. You don't need to teach that child how to steal that spirit's in him from when he's born into the world. You don't need to tell him how to go out there and commit adultery. If you never get him saved, he'll live like a dog in the world. Amen. If he never makes right with God. Why do you think when they came to Peter and asked Peter the question, men and brethren, what shall we do? They wanted to know what they needed to do to be saved. Amen. And the scripture said that Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, that is the removal of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you and unto your children and to all them that are far off, even as many as the Lord your God shall call and with many other words do they testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves. I'm, I'm talking about salvation. Amen. About what it feels like to be saved. If a man's living in this world, he knows one thing is certain. In the world, they say two things are certain. Ta uh, taxes and death. But in the scriptures, we know one thing is certain, and that's death. We talk about the appointment that all men must keep. Amen. There are certain appointments you can break. Amen. There are certain places that you might be told you need to be there, but you may not turn up and it may not be a problem. But there is an appointment that all men must keep. There is an appointment that every man living must keep one day. That's the appointment with death. 
And the scripture said that it is appointed unto men. Once to die and after that the judgment. Amen. There's a reason why most men don't want this gospel. Not the way we're preaching it. They don't want to hear these things. They want to tell you, well, it's all right to do a little bit of what the world is doing. It's all right to compromise sometimes. It's all right to have friends in the world and do what you see the world doing. It's all right to dress a little like them, to live a little like them. They want to hear that compromise. But when you preach it the way it's been written, you, you've got to take that compromise out. The scripture said it. Come ye out from among them. Them who? The world. That's who. Got to come out from among them. You can't afford to be just like them. Or even a little bit like them. Why do you think the scripture says the saints shall judge the world? The saints. Those that God called. They're the ones who are going to judge the world. The saints shall judge the world. If, if you're living like them, how can you judge them? Amen? Amen? If you're living the way that they're living, how can you judge them? Amen? You can't be living the way they're living and expect that when God comes, you're going to say, well, judge him. When in fact in judging them, you're judging yourself. Huh? Come on, brother. All you've got to do is come out from among them. We're not supposed to judge now. Amen. Supposed to come out from among them now. Amen. But not to judge now. Judge not. For what judgment you judge, with that shall you also be judged. So we don't judge now. But the scripture said, having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your own obedience is fulfilled. That means when you're living right. When your own obedience to the word of God is fulfilled. Having in readiness to revenge all disobedience. Amen. That means you've got to preach this word. Preach the word. Be instant in season. Out of season. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort. With all long suffering. That means you did it today. Do it again next week. The week after, the year after. Keep doing it. Amen. Keep doing it. Gotta keep preaching the gospel. Amen. Listen now. There are many messages a man can preach in these last days, but there's one message I'm gonna to preach today is about that appointment that you've got to keep. Can't get away from it. Amen. You're not gonna avoid it. You're not gonna step away from it. Amen. Living in the world like a dog today, the scripture says, without a dogs and sorcerers. Without, that means outside the church. Living in the world as they want to live. Without the church of dogs and sorcerers. Their hearts are unclean. But you're going to have to keep that appointment. Doesn't matter what you do. If you die and you burn the body, you cremate the body, you burn it down to ashes. In fact, last night I had a little bit of a funny dream about someone's body that was burned, turned to ashes. They opened the container and showed it to me. And I touched the contents. And I said to them, I said, God's going to resurrect this. Even in this state. Doesn't matter what you do with it. And we've got to understand something. We're made beings. Somebody made us, formed us. The scripture said that it's God that said, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. It was God that said it. But the scripture goes on to say that the whole duty of man is to worship God. Did you know that? Did you know that, listen, I want you to go meet him. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 15. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 15. Don't you know that the whole duty of man is to worship God? Sometimes we think our time is our own. And we can do what we want with it. Sometimes we use our time to justify ourselves. I heard a man say this week, he said, listen. Keep a log of how you spend.